Hello and welcome to the shed. Today's video is going to be part one of a two-part series on doing rebates. In today's video we're going to be doing a very basic approach to the rebate without any specialist tools of any note. So today we're going to be doing a rebate on the end of this board and I'm going to show you how quick and easy that will be. The tools that we're going to be using today are very similar to obviously the tools that we used when we did the rebate here. Um, it's a very similar process, so it makes sense. So once again, we've got our basic mark out tools, square, pencil, marking knife. We're going to be using a marking gauge today. This is a wheel style. You could use the pin style, it doesn't really matter. Wheel style is just a little bit easier because it's a cutting gauge. So if you've even got a traditional cutting gauge, that'll work well. But wheel gauge is what I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using a chisel. Now, I might not need the chisel, but it's always good to have a chisel there. And along with that, a strop to keep it sharp if it's required. And then some fine toothed saw whether that is a Japanese pull saw like the Suzuki or a gent saw like this particular one here or any other back saw. You want to use a back saw for this because it's going to guarantee more accuracy. So now that we've got that out of the way, let me bring you in here and we'll get started with our layout. So as I said for today's video, I'm going to be working on the end. So we're going to be putting a rebate on the end of a board. Now, this is a very common sort of joint that you would do if you're making a box or aligning cabinets or any sort of carcass, uh, you can use the rebate as an alignment tool. So that's what we're going to concentrate on today. So when it comes to this, you can, if you're not sure about how square the end of your board is here, which I'd recommend if you are doing this, that you'd square an edge and then get this square on your shooting board. So in this case, I have squared this off and I would reference on here to actually get how wide I want this rebate to be now um, you can also if you have got it square here just bring your marking gauge in but for the sake of this I'm going to mark this part using that and then I'm going to mark the end grain using just the marking gauge just so you can see both ways so if we have another board that comes in sets the thickness of my strop here mark that on here like this now just like with the dado we're referencing off this being the reference edge, so the stock of my square is on that. This is most likely your reference face. It doesn't have to be, but in most cases, that is probably where you're going to be doing your marking. So now that we've got that, we need a thickness. Now, when it comes to a rebate, I have seen them up to about half the thickness. I don't really like to go any more than oh, about a third of the way. Um, I just feel that it weakens this piece too much, especially if you're going to be putting screws or nails through this end to hold this board. I think you want to have a little bit of meat left left there. So, just like when we did the dado, I'm actually just going to eyeball it. Now, if I knew that it was 19 mil, you'd go to a third of 19 mil. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to take that as my marking, which is going to be close enough in this case, and I'm going to come in and try and eyeball this mark. Now, as it happens, I'm actually dead on that uh, first go. Uh, this does have markings on it, but I never like to use the markings on these because I find quite often they're not accurate. They do happen to be accurate on this one, but I prefer real-world measurements, as I've mentioned multiple times. So, come along to here and we're going to lock that down, so I'm now going to run this through here a couple of times. Now, you can see with these marking gauge here that I'm actually just rolling it, because it's on a short area. If I pull it, it's likely to go too far, but if I get it here and roll it, you just have a little more control. Likewise on the end grain here. like to go three times and then we need to do this side just here as well once again rolling it so this edge here and I'm once again just gonna roll it along there so now there's one last marking we need to do and that's this little edge here so bring our square in on that reference face 
lodge the knife in that little knife we line we've done before and just do some little controlled cuts trying not to go too far I you are always going to go too far but we're attempting to prevent that Let me quickly pencil that in for you. So we can clearly see here now, along here, along there, along that side there, and then up on the face here, along here. So this section is what we're taking out and when you're doing markings like this you should always mark your waist so you remember which side you are working on. Whatever you want to do to mark that waist mark it because you do want to mark just so you remember what side you're on. So now we're going to move on and we are going to use the chisel here you don't have to but this does improve accuracy so we're going to do the same process that we did when we did the dado video. Once again, we're going to hold this down so it doesn't move with a hold fast. And we're going to come in and we're going to mark back against that line we've just done and make ourselves that little relief wedge. If we need to, we can bring that knife back in here, make it a little deeper just to take that material out. And now we've got that coined knife wall. With these, I always like to try with the chisel to come around just on this edge here on both sides. Just so when you actually start, you've actually got a little better reference just coming down these edges. So since I used the gent saw in the last video, I'm going to use a Japanese pull saw, the Dazuki today. I like this because it has a hybrid tooth to it and some cases it works a little bit better, but if you've got a very fine rip cut uh, tenon or a cross cut, that's going to work fine too. But for this particular cut, I'm going to be using the Dazuki because I just want to show you that you can use any back saw, whether that's Japanese or Western. Now, when we start here, it's going to be almost identical to what we did before. We're going to sit the saw in here. We're going to start at this far edge, nibble our way back. Now, we obviously don't have a finger pushing it up against there, but we don't really need that. So now we can see we've established that across. Once again, I'm going to cut on my side first down to the, the line. Check this side, we're down to the line. Take the waist out in the middle. You guys might be thinking now that I'm going to use a chisel to remove that waste. We're going to be using a chisel to do rebates in the next part of the video next week. So for this one, I'm actually going to be using the saw and we're going to saw that out. So let's get it set up in the vise and we'll start sawing. So to start here, I want to make this a little easier. So I'm going to come back with that marking gauge, which I didn't change. And I'm going to make sure that this gauge line, especially across the top here, is nice and deep. So now we've got a very very defined line here. Now normally you wouldn't do this on end grain but it does help if you've got a nice sharp chisel you can once again make just a little depression here using your chisel. You're only moving the tiniest amount of material here and you can bring your square in here and bring this dead bolt upright it's going to make it a little easier for the cutting process. So once again, we're going to start here at this edge and we're going to nibble back very slowly using that knife line or gauge line. So now we're established right the way across. I'm going to cut my side first. them right down then you can turn it around if you want or in this case 
We already have it referenced here, so we can use this line as a reference. And now, straight down the middle, take out that pyramid that was there, that little that pyramid in our material. So as we get close to the end, if you give it a little pinch here, it just stops it from wanting to fall away. And we've removed that. So now you want to put your square onto here, off your reference edge, which in my case is this side, and you want to see where there's material at a square here. Now in the case of this one, this side over here is a little high, so we're going to remove a little bit of material off this side, referencing from this edge, which looks to be square. So now I'm going to secure this back here on the bench with the hold fast again, and we're going to use a little bit of chisel work now. If you have a nice wide chisel, something like this, which I know most of you probably aren't, that's going to be easier for this process. You can get away with using a small one, but if you do have a nice wide one, go ahead and use that. It will be a lot easier. Just that wider reference is going to allow it to be flatter, quicker and easier. Or, as I've mentioned before, you can use specialty tools, such as something like the router plane, without actually having a dedicated tool for making a rebate. We could use the router, which is more versatile, to help level that out. So I've got it secured back down again, and we know that we've got it referenced down here, so you can actually start on the bit that we already know is flat, and work with the chisel flat now. If your handle doesn't clean the bench back here, you can just block you work up on a bit of block and then hold it down or have it right on the edge of your bench so the handle's not a problem. So now, now that I've done that, I'm just going to lift back off by looking at it up like this. I'm just checking where it's out now. It's so little. It's pretty much flat along here, it just drops off a little bit on this edge, which means that there's just a little bit of material here that just needs to come off. So you can see where my nails just picked that up there. That is part of the gauge line that was left, so that's when the material hasn't come off. So we need to remove that. Secure it back down on the bench. And this time I'm going to come back in where we missed that, raise that a little bit, and using that flat back of the chisel, Once again, we have a look at this. We can see that it's maybe out by the tiniest fraction of a millimeter right at this end, and that's not enough to worry about. So I would say this is now done. There you go, folks. As you can see, that was another quite simple process with basic hand tools without having any dedicated tools that would speed this process up. I really just want to show you these so if you don't have specialist tools, you don't think that you can't go ahead and actually do these. I want to show you that with the most basic tools, you can just go ahead and have a go and you can get it right and actually use these alignment tools and joints in, in your projects right as a beginner. And I think that is the most important thing that we show these most basic joints and most basic alignment tools and show you how to do them in the most basic way without power tools, without specialist plow planes and uh, moving philisters and router planes. We can do this just with a few basic marking tools, a saw and a chisel. And that is what I'm trying to get across to you with this video. Now, in part two, we're going to be doing a rebate going with the grain and I'm going to be showing you how we can do that using just a basic chisel. You'll have to stay tuned for next week's video for that. So if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing down below. It really does help the channel out. And if 
you want to support me a little bit further, while you're down there, please consider giving the video a super thanks if you got some value out of it. That'd be much appreciated. Or maybe consider checking me out on Patreon. That link's down in the description if you're interested. So consider checking that out too. And if you'd like to see some more videos like this video, please check out the video up here where I show the same very basic sort of joinery of doing a dado up here if you missed out on last week's video. And I'll also leave the beginner playlist that this is going to be part of. Bye for now.